Hey Jed, it's good to see you again. And an extra special welcome if you're new. It's so great to have you with us. Hey, feel free to jump on the chat. Uh, send us a message, send somebody else a message, say hi to all your peeps. Isn't it great that even though we're at home, we can still worship together. So let's get stuck into it.
church we've had some prayer requests come in and by text and by email over the last week or so so why don't you join me as we pray together for these things lord we pray for those that have got family that are overseas in the uk uh, others in the middle east and also others in uh, countries like asia in the asian continent lord we lift these people up to you we know how distressing it can be with people a long distance and the tyranny of distance lord we pray that you would comfort those who face these experiences, that you would uh, bless with healing and recovery those that are in those places that are, uh, are recovering and coming out of COVID. Lord, we ask for your protection in the nations of the world, that this pandemic will quickly be brought under control. And Lord, that you would turn our hearts towards you in the midst of all of these challenges. We ask that in Jesus' name. And Lord, we want to thank you for our nation of Australia. Lord, as we head for Australia Day, we want to give you thanks and praise that we have such an amazing nation and we thank you for your presence here. Lord, we thank you for the leadership that you've given us at this time. We pray for Scott Morrison and his family. We pray for Gladys and those who are watching over us in this season of COVID. And Lord, we thank you for their leadership and we ask that you would watch over them and strengthen them. We thank you, Lord, for our beautiful nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, church. Why don't you continue to pray for our nation in the days ahead? Uh, we are called as a nation to be a blessing, so why don't you continue to pray? Thanks for joining us. Hi, church. We're going to continue our worship right now with a time of giving. And if you would like to participate in this moment, then everything you need for that is on the screen right now. I'm reminded in the Psalms that how much God loves our worship, how much He loves it when we lift our, our praise up to Him. It says He delights in the praise of His people. Further on in the Psalm, it says His love for us is so high as we bow down before Him and as we worship Him. <laughs> 
as we give to him. And that's what this moment is. I was reminded of this recently with my little girl who doesn't have a job, she doesn't have any money coming in, and yet she had an opportunity to give me a gift. And it was fairly small, but the thought that she had put into that gift just touched my heart. She was so excited to give it to me, and I was so excited to receive it. I knew really that I had actually paid for it, but that wasn't the point. The point was that she had put that effort in, she had wrapped that gift up, that she had presented it to me with love. And I was so incredibly touched by that. And I know in some ways this is not a great comparison, but I believe that that's how God feels when we give our gifts to Him, when we worship Him, when we bow down before Him. So I wanna remind you today to lift your arms to Him, to worship Him, He is your God and your Saviour. And as you give to Him, know that He absolutely delights in that gift. I'd love to pray for you. Lord Jesus, I pray for each person that gives today. I thank You that You love them, that You know them. I thank You that You delight in their gift. I pray that You would bless them and be with them today. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Hey everyone, my name is Jess. I'm part of the kids team here at C3 Church Ride. Here at C3, we believe that the kids can learn a lot about God even from a very young age. We have lots of fun and games, but we also learn about Jesus and we build our faith together. So we hope you'll check it out. There's more information on the screen. Hey guys, if you're in high school, we would love to invite you to join Full House Youth. We meet on site and online and you're welcome to come check out both. We have a YouTube channel and you're welcome to check that out. Come along, you'll meet new friends. You can connect with people on an online group or on site. There's such amazing stuff we do. It's so much fun. You'll meet so many new people, you'll grow and we'd love to see you there. Yeah!
my church. It's so great to be with you today. And especially at the start of the year, it's so wonderful to be with you as we look forward to 2021. We have started the year with a whole series on God's promises, which is really exciting. And we wanted to start the year this way because it's a great foundation to start the year with our foundation being the promises of God and um, being able to stand on those for the year. So much better than standing on resolutions, right? New Year's resolutions. I'm not even sure why we make New Year's resolutions. Nobody sticks to them. I think the majority of people give up within two weeks. So this year I decided to make some New Year's resolutions that I knew I could stick to. The first one was that I would break all of my New Year's resolutions within a week. Uh, The second one was that I would go on a diet that would last two, maybe three days tops, and then I'm just going to go back to eating whatever I want for the whole year. And um, my last resolution is that I'm going to stop procrastinating. This is one of my biggest, um, biggest problems I have. So I'm going to stop procrastinating, but I'm going to start that next month. But God's promises, so much better to stand on than than New Year's resolutions. And what I love about God's promises are that they actually reveal the nature of the one who promises. So when we read his promises in his word, they reveal something about God to us. So as we stand on them, during the year, what we're doing is we're standing closer to God. We're coming closer to him. We're learning more of his nature and his character. And as a result, our relationship with him flourishes. And that's what's so great about his promises. So the promise that we're going to look at today is the promise of God's presence. And I'm reading from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. And Moses is speaking and he's saying to the people, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Moses is speaking to the group of Israelites whose their nation's journey has been incredible so far. So they've come out of... um, deliverance from Egypt where they were under oppression and slavery under Pharaoh. They've been been, uh, brought through that in such a miraculous way and they, they have now come through their 40 years of wandering in the desert. A journey that should have been much, much shorter but 40 years it took for the nation to come to this point where they are on the verge of entering into the promised land. Moses, he knows that he won't be going into the promised land. With them, God has told him that he will die before he enters in. But Moses is saying to the people, you know, you don't need to worry. Remembering for these people who are about to enter into the promised land, Moses is the only leader that they've ever known and he won't be going with them. But he's saying, don't worry about it. You don't need to fear because God himself is with you. And I think this is such a great promise because it's it's great to have people around us who are encouraging us and who do the journey with us, but at the end of the day, it's God himself who goes with us. He's the one who can do only what he can do. And so that's a great reminder that he is with us. And Moses is encouraging the people because he knows they need it. He knows that they're are going to be many opportunities to be fearful and many opportunities to be discouraged when they enter that promised land. And he's saying, don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be terrified because God is with you. Moses knows that the people are going to face not only physical battles, but battles of their mind once they enter into that promised land. And I think it's so interesting that Here they are on the verge of the promised land. This is God's promise to them, the very thing that they have been looking forward to their entire life, the fulfillment of all of God's promises for them, the land that's flowing with milk and honey. They are on the verge of stepping into everything God has promised for them, and yet they are still going to face battles. 
it's not going to be easy for them. Isn't that interesting? Because I think sometimes we rate our success on the circumstances around us. So if things are going really well, we think, oh, I must be in the will of God. Or if things are kind of falling apart, not going so well, crazy things happening, we can think, oh, I must be outside of the will of God. But it's not necessarily so. You can be right where God wants you to be. You can be in one of the promised lands that God has for you and still be facing battles. That, that's, that's life. That's how we live. Our success is not based on smooth sailing. That doesn't mean that you're a success when everything is going well. And actually, Jesus redefined success for us. Success for Jesus wasn't based on being trouble-free either. His ministry was successful. I would rate it as, as successful. He was casting out demons. He was healing people. There, there were miracles happening. In my mind, that's success, but it certainly wasn't without trouble. And his success wasn't based on his popularity either. He was loved by a lot of people, but he was also hated by many as well. His, his success was being in the will of God. And that's what our success is as well. Success is being in the will of God despite what might be going on around us, despite what battles we might be facing. Success is imitating Jesus, actually. It's imitating Jesus. It's doing what Jesus did, which was word and action. Jesus was all about proclaiming the kingdom of God and demonstrating the kingdom of God. That's our job. That's where success is, when we are in that sweet spot, where we are proclaiming to people the good news and where we're demonstrating it, where we're loving people, where we're reaching out and doing practical things to, to show people the love of Jesus. That is imitating Jesus. That's exactly what we are called to do. We're called to bring that presence, that presence that Moses talks about that goes with us always, that never leaves us nor forsakes us. We are called to take that presence to people so that they can encounter Jesus as well. Because we have, just like the Israelites here, we have been brought out of our own Egypt. We've been brought out of a place that was full of darkness. In fact, Colossians 1 verse 33 says that we have been rescued from the kingdom of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of his son, Jesus. Isn't that amazing? I love that scripture. We have been rescued from the kingdom of darkness and we have been transferred into the kingdom of darkness of his son. That's amazing. And that is the most precious moment in our journey is when we say, Jesus, please rescue me. Jesus, I want to give my life to you. And if you haven't done that yet, then at the end of this, there's going to be an opportunity for you to make that decision and, and begin your journey with Jesus. But we've been rescued from the kingdom of, of darkness. And for however long we've been in the kingdom of light, the kingdom of Jesus, we've been in training. We've been in training so that we can become mature in our faith, so that we can trust in his word and so that we can obey his commands. And 2021, we are entering into a promised land. It's going to look different for each of us. And it, it's probably not the last destination for most of us, but it is a destination on our journey. And I say this confidently because Jesus always has something more for us every year, every month, every week. In fact, every day, Jesus has something more for us. He has a place that he wants us to progress to. And so 2021, we are progressing. We are moving forward. No matter where we are today, it's, it's not going to be where we are at the end of 2021, because the Lord will have taken us into a new place. And so if there is any fear about this year 
and what's to come. The answer to that fear is this promise, knowing and standing on the promise, the truth, the fact that God goes with you. God goes with you. And God, he challenges us to be strong and courageous this year. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. I am with you, he says. So how do we move forward into 2021? How do we do that with God? Well, Moses gives us a few instructions. He says in chapter 30, verse 14, Moses encourages the people of God to follow his word. He says, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you may obey it. And he urges them to walk in his ways. In verse 16, it says, I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commands, decrees and laws. And then you will live. Then you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless the land you are entering into. He then goes on, Moses, to warn them not to, not to turn their hearts away, but to choose life. Choose life. And this choice for us to choose life, it's not just a thought that we have, but it does begin with a thought. It begins with our thoughts meditating on the word of God. That's where it starts. That's our starting point, meditating on the word of God. And then your thoughts, your meditations on his word, they become our words. So we begin to speak what we read, what we see, what we meditate on. And then our thoughts become our actions. Not only do we read it and meditate on it, not only do we speak it, but we do it. We do it. James 1.22 says, do not merely listen to the word, but do what it says. Let your thoughts meditate on the word of God. Then let your words mirror his words, and then let your actions mirror your words. So as we come to an end today, I want to encourage you just to think about an area in your, in your world for 2021 where you know that you need the presence of God to go with you. Maybe it's the area of finances, maybe it's the area of a particular relationship that you have, maybe it's work situation. Think of that one area that you need the presence of God to go with you. You might want to jot it down. You can jot it down on a piece of paper now or in your journal, but I want to pray for you. Jesus, I thank you. Thank you so much for each person watching today. Father, I pray that they would truly know that your presence is with them, that you go before them, in front of them, you go beside them, Lord Jesus. You, you guard them, you protect their ways, you direct their steps. Lord God, I pray for an incredible blessing over our people in 2021. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. The reason Jesus came was to open up the way for every person to know God. He says this beautiful phrase in John 17, where he says, this is eternal life. It is to know the only true God and Jesus Christ the one he has sent. Do you know eternal life is about knowing Jesus and knowing God? And the most wonderful offer that God has given us is that Jesus came to die in our place that we might receive every blessing he has for us. His death brings life to us. You know, maybe for you today, you've been considering whether you want to accept that gift that God has given. It's up to every person personally to say yes to Jesus. And right now, in this moment, I want to give you that chance to say yes to Him. I am so, so grateful that over 25 years ago, somebody said to me, would you like to know Jesus? And I said, yes. And now I'm saying that to you today, would you like to know Jesus? 
He will never turn you away. All who trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. So I want to encourage you and I, I even want to challenge you to be bold today and say yes today. Say yes to Him. You have the opportunity to click that button that says, yes, I want to follow Him. And I'd love you to pray this prayer with me today. I'm going to pray and you can pray this after me and make this your own prayer to Him. Lord Jesus, thank you that you came for me. Thank you that you died for me. Thank you that you rose again. Today, I give you my life and I receive your precious offer of forgiveness, of salvation and new life. Lord, forgive me. Help me follow you with all of my heart and fill me with your Holy Spirit today that I would live with you forever. Amen. God bless you. If you've made that decision today, we're so excited for you. Please let us know by clicking that button. We'll see you soon. God bless. Thank you so much for joining us again for Online Church. Wasn't it great? We hope that you have a wonderful week and look forward to seeing you again next weekend at Church Online. Church Online next weekend. Don't be late. <laughs>